this Sunday, the Minnesota Vikings have another 12 o'clock game. Have we played besides on 12? We've played one Sunday night football game, and that was a great game against the Seattle Seahawks. Outside of that, Vikings have played at 12 o'clock Central every week so far. After this week, they do take on the Chicago Bears. I think they go to Chicago to take on the Bears, and it is a Monday night football game. That should be a good game, by the way. Anyways, Vikings have an outside chance at the playoffs. Same with the Lions. Vikings and Lions both have an outside chance at making the playoffs. Possibly a sixth or seventh seed. I wouldn't see either Vikings or Lions being able to get that fifth seed because of how the NFC West is looking and how the NFC South is looking. So fifth seed is out of the picture. Division is out of the picture. Sixth or seventh seed, Lions and Vikings are both playing for right now. So this game is huge for both teams. When you look at it, though, the Lions cannot compete. They cannot compete. They lost their two biggest offensive players, Matthew Stafford, who has looked great this year. Matthew Stafford has looked great this year, and Matthew Stafford is possibly a top 10 quarterback in the league, but we aren't able to see it because he gets injured every season, and I hate to see it. I know I'm not a fan of the Detroit Lions. Of course, I do not like the Detroit Lions, but when players like Matthew Stafford get injured and their careers are just getting ruined because of injuries, you hate to see it. And then Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay and Matthew Stafford has a great wide receiver and a quarterback combination right there. Kenny Galladay has been playing great this year as well. They are both out for the game. Now, of course, Kenny Galladay can possibly still play in the game. He is not ruled out, but most likely they will not play Kenny Galladay and they will not play Matthew Stafford this week. So what does that leave? Chase Daniel is now starting under center with the Detroit Lions. Unfortunately, is not David Bal- David Blau. Last year when Matthew Stafford went out, David Blau was starting and that guy sucks. Okay, David Blau plays awful. He is not good at all. Vikings beat him, of course. But you know who the Vikings didn't beat would be Chase Daniel. Chase Daniel last year was the backup with the Chicago Bears who played for Mitchell Trubisky when he was out with the injury. And Chase Daniel may not be great, but the Vikings still managed to lose to him. So I would not rule this uh, an easy win for the Vikings at all. Even though Chase Daniel is not a great quarterback, Vikings lost to him. Last year, they locked, they lost to that Kansas City backup quarterback. Can't remember his name, but they lost to the Kansas City backup quarterback. And they still have some good pieces on offense. Marvin Jones last year. Vikings allowed three touchdowns to Marvin Lo- Jones last year, if you remember that. Marvin Jones is a great wide receiver, and he's going to be the, the number one wide receiver, and it will not be a problem at all for him because the Vikings defense is just that bad. We don't have our starting corner, Mike Hughes. He is not going to play this game, and possibly our two corners after that will not play this game as well. Cameron Dantzler and Holton Hill are both questionable for, for this game. Putting Jeff Gladney on Marvin Jones might not be a great idea. I think Jeff Gladney against Danny Amendola is probably better. He is a slot wide receiver, Danny Amendola, so I do think having Jeff Gladney against him would be a better spot for Jeff Gladney to be at. Anyways, Marvin Jones, we're going to possibly have Cameron Dantzler if he's there or Holton Hill, someone against Marvin Jones, and that will be a good matchup for Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones will have a lot of fun against these Vikings rookie corners, these Vikings young corners, as every wide receiver does. Outside of that, Vikings, I mean, I mean, the Lions offense is not bad. Now, of course, they do not have their top playmakers but TJ Hawkinson is looking great he is looking like an amazing starting uh, tight end and he is getting a lot of targets with Matthew Stafford Matthew Stafford is loving TJ Hawkinson and like we know that wide that uh, quarterback and tight end duo is very important in the NFL more important than it's ever been in history in the NFL that quarterback tight end duo is very important you see this with a lot of teams the You see this, especially with the Kansas City Chiefs right now, the best team in the league. You see this with the Baltimore Ravens. You see this with the with the um, George Kittle and the 49ers. That quarterback to tight end duo is very important. You saw this for years with Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, and you still see it in Tampa Bay with them, too. So anyways, quarterback to tight end duo is very important. Of course, Matthew Stafford is not there, but still Chase Daniel. He loves those short, easy passes, those short, quick passes. And for that reason, TJ Hawkinson will get a lot of targets this game. Of course, Vikings do have Eric Kent. Hendricks so it might it's not very it's not looking very good for TJ Hawkinson because Eric Hendricks is the best inside linebacker in the league and if he is going against TJ Hawkinson that's going to be tough for TJ anyways outside of that DeAndre Swift and and Adrian Peterson are both their starting one and two running backs both those two players in the backfield are not a huge threat DeAndre Swift is a uh, second round draft pick out of Georgia I think I might be wrong about that but I do think he was a second round draft pick out of Georgia DeAndre Swift has had a great start to his career. Of course, he's not a huge threat. He's not Dalvin Cook. He's not anyone huge. Adrian Peterson, of course. Adrian Peterson throughout his career has been okay. He hasn't been... Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Ever since the Vikings... I said throughout his career. Ever since the Vikings, he has been okay. He has not been a star. Of course, when he was with the Vikings, he was was incredible. Anyways, um... 
So the Vikings did lose to Chase Daniel last year and allowed three touchdowns to Marvin Jones last year. So I would not count this game out. Even though the Lions do not look like a tough team at all with Matthew, with Matthew Stafford and Kenny Galladay injured, they don't look like a tough team at all, and they don't look like they should win this. I would not rule this an out game because the Vikings defense is just that bad. They should be able to, to um, hold the Lions to under 30 points. They should be able to hold the Lions to under 30 points. Outside of that, we, don't, we, can't, we can't rely on this defense to win you the game. We cannot rely on this defense no matter how bad the Lions offense looks right now. We can't rely on that. All you got to do is not get bit deep. That's all the Vikings defense has has stopped. Chase Daniel doesn't throw a great deep ball anyways. Without Kenny Galladay, they don't have a deep threat anyways. So Vikings shouldn't be able to allow any deep passes. But we don't know what to expect from this Vikings defense. We do not know what to expect from this Vikings defense. They could allow huge plays. That's what kills the Vikings defense. Just do not get beat deep. Stop those beat stop those deep passes chase daniel does not throw a great deep ball so you shouldn't and you should be able to hold them to under 30 points should be able to hold them to under 20 points but i wouldn't even rely on that from this vikings defense because our starting corner is out and outside of that does not look great outside of eric kendricks and harrison smith anthony harris of course still i guess you can s still uh give him that anyways how will the vikings work to win this game how will the vikings win this game of course dalvin cook that's all it is Dalvin Cook. That's how we won last game, how we won against the Texans, how we should have won against the, the Titans and the Seahawks. It's Dalvin Cook. Actually, he was out half the game against the Seahawks, but they still ran the ball in just about every play. They will give Dalvin Cook over 20 carries, of course, pro possibly over 30 carries. He can run all over this Lions defense. It is no problem for Dalvin Cook. But what have the Vikings revolved around? Of course, Dalvin Cook. They have revolved around Dalvin Cook to where the point where that run st sets up a great pass. Now, of course, last week they didn't do any, really any good passes because it was windy and they didn't have to. I mean, they just gave Cook the ball and he made just about every play. The only passes they gave, I think they threw four time, 14 times, and it was just screen passes and check down passes. That's really all it was. Anyways, that, that Dalvin Cook is going to set up the pass. And when you have two wide receivers like Jefferson and Thielen, who both have easy matchups this week, the Lions defense is terrible. I don't know why they're not starting Jeffrey Okuda. I think that's very weird. They did take Jeffrey Okuda third overall in the draft from the Ohio State, who was by far the best corner in the draft. They took him, and they're not even starting him. They're not even starting him against Thielen. He should be going up against Thielen. He is a right cornerback. I don't get that at all. Anyways, that run is going to set up the pass. Vikings have a great receiving core. You can run all over the Lions defense. You can pass all over the Lions defense. Vikings offense should have a great game. I expect to see a great game from Dalvin Cook and an amazing game from Kyle, or from Kirk Cousins. I think Kirk Cousins is going to throw for over 250 yards, possibly over 300, and will probably total for our record three touchdowns. I don't know how he will get those three touchdowns, what it will be, but I think he will get three touchdowns. Dalvin Cook, I do think, is also going to get two touchdowns on the day with 130 or 170 rushing yards and possibly over 30 uh, receiving yards because that's how they've used Dalvin Cook so far. I do think Dalvin Cook will get over 25 carries this game and they're going to revolve around that that run game because that's how the Vikings offense is built and the Vikings will win this game 34 to 17. Vikings will win the game 34 to 17 with a dominant performance over the the Detroit over the Detroit Lions and progress to three and five. Vikings will go to three and five and then on Monday Night Football take on the Chicago Bears the following week. That's going to be an interesting game. That's going to be a big game for the for the Minnesota Vikings. Going on the road to play the Chicago Bears, that's going to be an interesting game for the Minnesota Vikings. Let me know what y'all think. How do you think this game is going to go?